Hi, Tom Stewart with Cleaning Business Today. Hey guys, uh, sorry we had a little technical difficulty here. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with the details, but we had to stand up a new Facebook Live, and it looks like we're completely by ourselves at the moment. But hopefully, everyone will figure this out. And uh, you want to know yeah. why? You want to know why we're all by ourselves, Tom? Oh, please go 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 ahead, Liz. Let, you know. well, I just have to tell you, Tom, that the reason why we're all by ourselves is because it's two fourteen. <laughs> two fourteen. It's but, not two o'clock. <laughs> But you know, we were. Why? Why were we late, Liz? Help! Help me with that. Why? Well, explain to people why we were late. Um, because we weren't paying really good attention to the time. We were jabbering. That's why. We, That's we were the planning. Trip. We were working. We've been working right. nonstop. All right. All right. We were working on training, right, and trying to come up with a schedule for the free training for the technicians. Hey, Sarah. Hello, Sorry, Sarah. Sorry, Sarah. Uh, glad to see you, Sarah. Um, yes, we were working on training, but come on, we were we were taking advantage of our <laughs> late yep. history. We've been late every single time. We just we learned that uh, if we're ten minutes late, the uh, <laughs> the Facebook Live gets canceled. Yeah. yeah. So now and we know we will never be this late again. I can tell you that. That's so never gonna eight happen. Late, maybe nine, but not ten. Yeah. Never gonna be this late again. All right, you guys. Um, um, you uh, let's get started because Matt. I know Matt has some great stuff to share today, sure. and yeah. it is kind of late. So I, I hate to get started while we don't have very many people on here, but people will still be able to go back and watch. Yeah, yeah, and they're joining. They're 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 hopping on right now. Yesterday, okay. the question was asked, "How do we put together rocking uh, training videos?" And it's like, well, I've got ideas, but I know somebody is really really good at that. That's uh, something that Matt has a lot of firsthand experience with, and I've seen his work and talk to him and uh, he's agreed to come on and actually show some of the tools that, that that he uses and give us some tips as to how we can do that. So with no further ado, Matt, if you could hook us up. Hey guys. Uh, so yeah, Matt Ricketts, Better Life Maids. Um, I would say probably some of my skill sets are digital marketing, photography, videography. So some of this stuff is going to come a little easier to me. What I want to share with you is that there are some basic consumer level tools that you can use to actually create pretty good content. Um, me and Tom talked about this a little bit earlier today, and I was telling him I use iMovie, which is a like a consumer you know level product, and he and he was saying that uh, that that may not work for everyone. So I want to also recommend Camtasia. There's also some other simple products. We talked a little bit about YouTube. I looked at it. Um, YouTube is good for some things. So like if you had a video you can actually shoot another video and put like picture in picture of you talking in the video, but it doesn't have as many detailed editing features as I would, as I would necessarily want. Um, so let me, let me just show you a few, a few, a few quick things. Um, I'll, um, I'm going to share my screen here for a few minutes and we're going to just dive in. I'm going to go to share my full screen so I can show my video editing software. So, um, this is this is iMovie, and what what I'm looking at right here is something um, I'm working on a video of us cleaning all of our tools once we leave a property, basically sorting them and then washing each bottle, things like that. So I still have to to finish that movie, but I'm going to go to some projects that I just did, uh, just so we can look at something that's that's done and and very simple. So this one. This one is a one-shot video. Very few edits were necessary um, to make this video. So all it is is showing our staff after cleaning a bathroom that they would want to remove their gloves, how to properly remove their gloves, uh, that they would have a plastic bag in their caddy, and then to either wash or use hand sanitizer before putting on a new pair of gloves. Uh, kind of, you can see that, like, kind of some shaky camera work. But again, it's could be used for consumer facing or or uh, or to your staff. You could actually show your, your customers how you're doing some things. So really, you know, the only things that are done here that, that, that I was able to do was um, down here, the audio is a voiceover. So in iMovie, you can go to window, record a voiceover, and it, and it allows you to uh, do that um, 
relatively easily. Um, that's important because the audio that you're gonna see kind of built into your movies is gonna be kind of crummy to start with. So I'm gonna go to YouTube and actually where I have, or actually I think I can just play it from here. We can kind of hear what's what I did on the voiceover. Place them in a plastic bag that we have stowed in our caddy, and next we will go ahead and either wash our hands. So that's so that's it. Like you know, you're just going to explain what you're doing. So that way, you don't really have to worry about what the sound is like when you're making the movie. So on on any on any video with a, a video editor, you can you can just right click on your video and you can detach the audio. That I've already done that, and then you would delete the old audio file and then record your new one. There is tutorials for all of this on YouTube. It makes it much easier than me just talking through it. But just some simple things that you can do that kind of make your videos seem a little bit more pro is, I'll just go ahead and delete this to kind of show you. Um, so adding your logo to a, to a movie is really kind of a pro thing that really I think makes any kind of, any kind of video seem a lot better, more pro. So you can, you can drop the media onto it. And then so you're going to want to drag it for the whole length of the video. And then you would change it to the kind of the, where you want it to be. So you want it to be a picture in picture so that it shows up somewhere in your video and you can move it where you want it on the screen. So a lot, again, I can't give you a video tutorial of all of this, but all you really need is, you know, a handheld camera, and some 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 uh, you know basic basic skills you can get off YouTube and shoot some decent training videos. So um, I'm I'm just going to jump over to YouTube and show you um, uh, if I can reach. It's blocked by this stream this video thing. Hold on, let me find. Uh, here we go. Uh, back over to YouTube. So there's some different ways you could give these to your to your employees. But you can upload them to YouTube and put them as unlisted files so that they're not on your, your YouTube channel and you can play them to your, to your cost or to your employees. So I recommend making short videos. A minute to, to five minutes is probably best. Um, I think three minutes is the sweet spot for length, but sometimes you've got to say a little bit more. And so your video would be a little bit longer. Um, you know, that's, that's, general, that's generally what I would, what I would recommend. And if nothing else, you can use iMovie on your phone, or there's probably some video editing software on your phone, which would allow you to add voiceovers after the fact. The main thing is just being able to add a narration to the video to separate the audio out and then add what you want to say to it after the fact. Because um, it's really hard to narrate what you're doing as you're doing it and shooting at the same time, um, unless you're the one in front of the camera and you're, and you're doing like an explainer video. And that's possible too. So those are some quick, those are some quick tips. Um, I would shoot as much stuff as you can at once, put it all in a file, and then you can just dump all that into iMovie as clips and, you know, drag them and move things around as you need. So, um, you know, maybe schedule a couple hours to shoot different things that you think is important uh, as you move forward. So I don't know if they're going to be top notch training videos, but the point is, you, you know, getting something done is better than, is better than nothing at this point. Um, and then, you know, better audio is more important than better than the, than the picture quality, whether it's from like a pro level camera or just something consumer grade like your iPhone. Um, you're, you're, you're better off to make sure that the audio is good because the bad audio is very distracting when you're trying to watch these. Obviously, bad video is not great either, but the audio is more important. So that's really all I had for, for basic tools. Um, I think anyone could get started with iMovie and figure it out within an afternoon with uh, some basic tutorials on YouTube. Wow, this is uh, a great way. I mean, you know, in about 15 minutes, I think that you gave, gave you know, everybody here enough information to, uh, not even 15 minutes, you know, about yep. six minutes. I mean, enough information to jump in and get started and, uh, you know, start editing uh, videos and, and putting putting material together that that would be useful. Because I guess, you know, we've had some discussions, Matt, that a lot of the videos, a lot of the training, not as videos, but training material in, in, in general, we, we need to update our internal training material to to match what's going on in, 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 in a COVID-19 world. You know, you were 
you know, telling me that that some of your videos on customer service are encouraging your your teammates, to, or your, your cleaners to like greet, you know, the customer at the door, maybe shake their hand, uh, things that uh, we necessarily wouldn't uh, not only want to encourage them to do, but we would probably uh, want to discourage them from doing that. So yeah, yeah, I was I was digging through our training library. We've got about like, um, we've got about 75 videos and COVID-19, like short little like one or two minute, like with with, you know, with training videos, and then usually five or six, five or six of them are grouped together and then make a test afterwards. And of those 75, I had to delete like or not delete, I had to unlist from our training archive 25 of them at least because they had things that COVID-19 made irrelevant um you know like so basically a third of our training almost is has been made ir irrelevant by um the, the current situation that we're going that we're going through so yeah but we've got time to do it now so i mean this is all part of uh you know, getting prepared for uh, when when things start uh, loosening up a little bit and yeah. things start getting back to uh, to something that looks more like normal. Yeah, we talked. We were talking a little bit about coming up with a plan to get restarted, and I, I was telling you I did, or maybe that was just a conversation we had. I, I don't remember the last time we talked about. Uh, but you know, we were you know getting ready to open, so I surveyed my staff, and uh, of about forty two people, twenty five people have bothered with the survey so far. So we're gonna have to wrangle up another you know, 15, 16, 17 people to, I guess two of those are me and my wife of the 42. So I, I guess we're good. We're okay. But I've got to- Did you I've answer got, the survey? Yeah, I'm, I'm not ready. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, so yeah, I've still got 15 people that have uh, not filled that survey out as far as, as far as I know at this point, I can look at that later. But um, those are things that I'm working on this week too. So on top of video videotaping, the stuff I'm creating content for my staff, keeping them engaged, um, you know, and, and I'm really looking forward to this training that, that you're building right now. Cause I want to deliver that to my staff as part of our, our, at least we're going to be open. Pay, I'm going to be open and paying them for at least two days and just retraining them before we actually go into customer homes. So, you know, part of it is I, I'm really excited to deliver your training to my staff. I'm going to, you know, break that up, you know, into, you know, some modules if, if I can, if I get your videos, I might, I might edit them myself and, break them up into bite-sized pieces and, and I'll, I'll give them back to you so you can do that yourself too. But the, the, the point being is that I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, getting all this content ready for my staff for when we, when we come back, because, um, you know, we're going to do a lot of zoom for a couple of days and go through all this stuff and um, just really get them up to speed on this. Uh, one of the things I saw from the survey was there's definitely some staff members that are concerned for safety and, and, you know, what we're doing to help, you know, keep them safe. So I think that that's something that this stuff will all help address. Yeah, I agree. I, I, even the people that don't think they have any kind of fear going on, there's an underlying, you know, nervousness there. They go home, their families say stuff that they, they push back on it, but it's still there underlying. So yeah. giving them more tools, more information, making them feel like, no, we really are safe. We really do know what we're doing. I think makes a, a really big difference. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I guess we'll be watching the chat here. If anybody has any specific questions about uh, videos or, 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 you know, putting together revised training materials in general, you know, hit us up. Um, Greg Stater had a good comment. Um, he uses something called Movari Video Suite. And um, maybe if he's listening still, you know, Greg, is that is that like a consumer grade thing that someone on Windows could easily um, could easily jump on and, and edit some movies with if they don't have a Mac? And I'll kind of wait for his answer if he's got something for that. Um, yeah, that's great. And then Heather's doing some Heather's doing some videos now. That's exciting. I think that'll be really good. So hopefully she uh, jumps in iMovie and creates some stuff or or whatever she comes up with. Yeah, I was hoping that we could share the one that she did that she shared today. So oh, cool. Share it on here. Um, if not, maybe I can find it. But it was, but it was. She did it really quickly. It was really well done. I think it's going to be received very, very well uh, along the same lines as as what you're saying, Matt. So, 
Um, she did one like when they leave the house, wiping down all the equipment kind of thing. Like wiping no, she did. She did. She's downloading it right now. It sounds like. Um, no, the one she did was um, how to make your own disinfecting wipes. So they're hard to find disinfecting wipes. Well, heck, we're having trouble too. So we made our own. You want to know how? Here, oh, let me cool. show you. That's yeah. neat. It's a great video. It really is. Cool. I tagged you in it, Tom, on Facebook. Okay. So that you can see it in our private, in the success group. Oh, okay. Um, I tagged you wrote, Tom, you'll love this video. Do you want to show <laughs> it here? Yeah, uh, let me see if I can. Let me see if I can pull it up. And if I can, then I'll share my screen. Um, she said it was okay to share with anybody. She said she's downloading it, so I don't know. Maybe that can be faster, easier. So you tagged me. Yeah. No. Okay. Uh. The success group. Hey, so I, I got, I just, my banker just texted me. This might be interesting to people. So uh, my PPP loan went to the SBA today. Uh, what what I did, find, what he found out was, because I was trying to see if you could delay getting it. You have 10 days of receiving approval to fund. So you can kind of push it back a little bit if you are, you know, hesitant to put all that money in for a timing reason. So we're working yeah. on it. We're Basically, he thinks it'll be five more days before we hear an approval, and then I could potentially push that back by 10 days, which I don't know if that's 10 business days or just 10 days. But either way, probably I have two weeks um, to kind of push my, even though I'll get approved for PPP, I'll have some flexibility when I put that money in and start my clock. So I was looking at a message that I just got now, and it's kind of relevant to what what is on people's minds with that. I don't want to go down another rabbit hole, but that's no, yeah. I, did, I did get it too. I have it pulled up right now too. Oh, cool. Let's watch it. All right. I'm going to share my screen. I think I'm going to share my screen. Do you need to stop sharing, Tom? No, there you go. Yeah. <clears throat> Your entire screen? Sure. Let's try that. Nothing's happening. It's not working. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's sharing your screen. It's sharing. You guys see it it's now? Okay. Whoa. Yep. Okay. So and you're sharing it. You just need to show the video. Let me pull it up. Yep. Can you guys see it now? No. There we go. There you go. No? No, yes. Okay. yes. So no, this see. is the... Now you see it? Okay. So this is um, the, the video. This is the, I guess it's an email that goes out that I can scroll on. And here's the video that she put inside of it. Well, or maybe this was a page on her website. Oh, wait a minute. We just got a link here in... See this link? Da -da -da -da. How do I click on that? No. How do I get you to want me to that? stop sharing, Tom? I see the link. Oh. Do you want me to stop sharing? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll share. And Nina, while he's doing that, it's not its not my actual garage. It's, uh, oh, he's got it now. So we'll talk about it later. Hi, everybody. It's Heather. Today, I'm going to show you how to DIY disinfecting wipes. What you're going to need is a roll of paper towels, a Ziploc bag, a good cutting board, and so a straight knife, something um, that has to be really sharp, which is going to work really well. And then your bottle of disinfectant. So you're going to take your roll of paper towels. You're going to <laughs> saw it in half with your serrated, serrated knife. And it is going to make a little bit of a mess, but don't worry about it. Once you're done cutting it in half, you're going to want to stick your roll of paper towels in your Ziploc bag. Take your bottle of disinfectant. 
and just pour it over the roll of paper towels. You're going to want to kind of do this slowly because you do want to let it absorb um, as you pour it in. And as it absorbs, you're going to see it kind of work its way down through those roll of paper towels. Back in the day when my kids were little, we cloth diapered and we would make our baby wipes like this. We would use baby oil and baby lotion um, in the water to make the wipes and I love it. Okay, so we're gonna let that sit for a couple of minutes, let it work it's all of its way down. And then once it's all saturated, you're gonna be able to pull out the core of the paper towels really easy, but I haven't let it sit long enough. So it's not coming out very easy. So again, we're gonna let it sit a little bit longer. What you're gonna to wanna to do with these disinfecting wipes is you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're hitting all of your touch points. During an epidemic, uh, they say to make sure you hit your touch points three times a day to be able to disinfect. Your touch points are things like your doorknobs, your handles in the kitchen, your faucets in the sink, um, in the bathroom, in the kitchen, the chair railing, the backs of chairs, the stair railing. So things like that, things where people are touching all day long throughout your home, those are things that you're going to want to disinfect. These are great. You can keep them in the Ziploc bag after you're done, or you can put them in a Tupperware container and store them in there. You are going to want to use them in a few days, maybe a week at the most, because they do start to get a little stinky um, after they're made. You might want to let this middle sit for about five to ten minutes. Once you pull the core out, you'll be able to pull out the whites just like a tissue box. I hope this I hope this helped you guys be able to make your own disinfecting wipes. Cool. Hi everybody, it's Heather. Today I'm going to show you how nope. to DIY disinfect. That's good. I like it. And Greg Stater was saying that he's using it on Windows 10. So the program that he mentioned again was, uh, he called it, let me go back to his comment, Movari, Movari or Movari, so M-O-V-A-R-I, if you were using a Windows program. He's saying that he's still learning it, but it's easy enough for him. So, you know, that's, that's good. So that way you can add your own logos, do some transitions. Videos look better if, if you actually put a transition at the front, at the beginning, at the end, you know how it kind of fades in from black or kind of blurs in or something like that. It looks less choppy than if you just have it start at the video. Like it, like almost, it almost looks like a video is just jumping if you actually just jump right to it. So putting like a one second transition at the beginning and the end is a nice little tip too. Um, in a transition between any video segments or cuts that you do is always very important to make things look a little smoother. Uh, and then you can always add logos and things like that into your into your things, and, and all of those will have tutorials. So that's pretty cool. Thanks, Greg. I, I I'll have to check that one out. I've not uh, I've not played with with that. I also use Adobe Premiere, uh, and that's they have a Plus product and a Ru and it's called Rush, which is not a free product. Tom, you can get Rush on your cell phone though, right? You have yeah. Your Rush is the Adobe product. It's uh, designed to work on your cell phone. So if you're like just shooting video on your phone, you can edit it down right on your phone, Premiere Rush. And yeah. I've used it a little bit and you can just post it right into YouTube or, you yeah. know, Facebook, wherever you want to on the fly with while you're not even sitting in front of a computer. I haven't used that one, but uh, I have used their their Premiere uh, their Premiere Pro. So Premiere Pro, which um, it, it is not really consumer grade, but if you are techie, um, it it is a good product for for making really high quality video stuff. So if you were really wanting to dig into this, um, you can get an Adobe uh, license. And so Adobe has a, a product called Adobe Cloud, where you can get all of their tools. Um, for a subscription price of typically $30 a month. I think they're offering it right now for like $15 a month um, as sort of a COVID-19 kind of like, you know, help you out kind of thing. Or, you know, if you got a student in your house, you can get a student license. So I've got three kids. I have students in my home. I guess I could have student licenses. I don't do that because I use it for business. But um, if you really were struggling for cash and you had a student in your house, you could you could get a student license. Uh, that That's possible. And those are like $10 a month for all of those softwares, uh, all, all of those software suites. 
and you could have your student, you know, edit it for you. You could teach your kids. So I want to, one thing I want to really encourage is um, I'm, I'm actually having my kids do a lot of stuff for my business right now. <laughs> so one thing I've got a 13 year old and she's really into the photography with my camera. Um, she's used my camera more in the last couple of years than I have. So now I'd like to teach her how to video edit and do some of this stuff too. So maybe give her a skill out of this too. And then I've got some free labor for video editing for the future too. Like if I've got a project, uh, I know Tom puts his kids to work in his business as well. They're a little older than, they're a little older than mine, but um, I, I think having your kids help in your business is, is good and, and finding things that they're good at. And I think they're so techie. A lot of us probably have kids that are more tech savvy than us. So they could probably do this stuff for you. Yeah, you just, absolutely. Uh, Truth for me. Yeah. yeah. You just tell them to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. I, I think any kid over about 12 knows more about technology than all of us. Like, I, I've been stunned to watch my kids really adapt to this online school stuff really easily. Like, um, you know, more so, I mean, my wife is not even like, she's not a non technical business person. Like, she's, she leads through like in person, you know, like, and uh, so she's, she's been the one doing a lot of the teaching. And it's funny how like my eight year old or nine year old son, he's like, the, the teacher gave some assignment where they really had like a lot of technical stuff. And he's just like, no mom, this is how you do it. And like walks through it, and <laughs> finds the link and gets online and joins the, joins the on, in-person meeting. And it's just like, uh, I don't, I don't know that I'm not trying to say anything bad about Angela, but she doesn't even use Facebook cause she doesn't, it's just like, doesn't <laughs> like, too hard. no, it's just it, partly it annoys so me. Partly do, you, the noise do, you rent, do you rent your son out, Matt? Because I, I need those services. Yeah, too. <laughs> yeah. My my nine year old's my my thirteen year old is is going to be on the payroll though. Like she, I'm gonna I'm gonna start giving her some serious work. So yeah, but my nine year old he'll find some stuff. I'm sure I can find him some things to do too. Maybe some spreadsheets and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, some someday, regular. someday I'll show you uh, Gavin's timesheet when he was two. Matt, we put him on payroll when he was two, and he had to keep going. <laughs> Time she really, I've got a, a five year old, and I was having some hesitation to put her on the payroll, but I, you know, because uh, I, actually, he was three. He was okay. three. okay, well, yeah. I, I, I know when we, were, when we were doing our daily engagement videos, I mean, we you, you did over 600 of those, and I think uh, Gavin was your your uh, camera team for, for yeah. most of that. He was an adult, though, he was 18 at least, 17, 18, he was old. Yeah, and he was he was editing for you though too though he was he was doing all the back end work right. Mm. You go you go look at those videos and you tell me if he was doing the editing. I think yeah. it was more like yeah, mom, I did the editing. Yeah, I think they worked. They served their purpose though. They were all short and sweet. I remember when we were using them in Portland. Um, I think this is a great time to like really think about how we are going to do some daily engagement, like and use video content to engage with our staff once this is over because. You know, one of the things I've always liked about Tom's business is the fact that he engages with his employees every day, has like a morning meeting. And we don't do that because our, our workforce is more distributed. You know, we we have jobs all over the place and, and don't really do it like that. Um, and I found some tools like Voxer can like blow up in your face, like, you know, with uh, some negative engagement. So I, it's nice to be able to control the message. So I think video and creating some short videos is going to be important. And being, learning this skill is going to be more important than ever. Um, is, is how you communicate with your staff moving forward and have like daily engagement via videos and other things. So I think this will continue to be a pretty important topic on, on how we, how we do this. Tom, do you consider, do you consider that those, those morning meetings that you, that you host now, that's probably going to be something you won't be able to do for at least a year, right? Or maybe, maybe not that long, but some period of time. It's going to be, it's, it's going to be different. And, and we're looking at ways that we could do that through video conferencing where people are on their phones. I mean, using, you know, something like Zoom, maybe. Um, we've we've played around with, with, with several different types of huddle cams where you can have like smaller groups of people that are participating that it kind of keeps uh, some some feeling that, that everybody's in the same room together. Okay. But, uh, we, don't, uh, we don't have a great answer for that at the moment. That's something that we're thinking about because uh, yeah, you're right. This whole social distancing thing might be something that's going to be with us uh, after we, we 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 start start back operations. I guess it's reasonable to think it would. Yeah, I don't. I don't we're, think we're doing them every morning. We're doing them on Ring Central oh, every cool. morning. Okay. So, and we have been for um, probably uh, at least a month. 
now. So Liz, you've always done that too. I didn't. I didn't even think to say that. What about what about um, what about uh, your your techs? Are they working in a different model right now? Or are you still doing Teams? Or how are you how are you addressing some of that with Teams of two? Teams of one and two. Yeah. Um, periodically, we'll put three, but it's it's tough because three people in a car, but one in the front seat, one in the back with masks. I feel okay about, but um, usually it's one and two. Okay. Right yeah. Now. I think two is, I think two is what we're going to be limited on. We are, we already really were, but you know, mostly singles, but I, I mean, I still am paying on a bunch of cars. So, I mean, it's, there's a, there's an efficiency factor there that like, if I'm paying one person to go out in a car, they're just not producing the, they're not producing the, the revenue yeah. necessary to pay, to pay that note on that car. I guess, you know, short term answer is maybe the PPP makes that all less relevant, but there's also people that don't right, talk we there's also people I have that I don't trust to drive my cars that work for me that were hired uh, like as like non-drivers. So they can't, they can't yeah. drive. And it's not always just something that you trust. I mean, if their driving record doesn't meet whatever criteria you've established with your insurance company, right. You know, it, it gets a little complicated. Yeah. Um, or like, like I had in Portland, I had some of the worst drivers, people driving for me in Portland, nice people, but, People do not like bad drivers in Portland. I think we got how many how many calls do you think we got in Portland, Tom, about bad drivers? Mm. About our, our people being bad drivers? More than one. <laughs> Multiple. I, I want to say maybe five. So that's not, that's not too lot. too bad. Yeah. We, everyone's gonna get that in marked cars. It's so funny I, that I don't what? get that in Olympia at all. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, we might get one or two a year, you know. I mean, it happens. And that's then, a lot of cars on the road. We had a total of three cars on the road. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Come on, that's a lot. There are a lot. It is. Let's. Uh, we can swing back around to this discussion, but one of the things that we talked about yesterday that that, that we said that we were going to do was share a little bit about an exercise that that, that you've been leading recently with. Uh, some of your your mastermind group with uh, SWOT oh, yeah. analysis. Did yeah. you uh, have anything you wanted to show us and, and share a little bit about what you guys have been doing? Um, well, I'm not going to share from the group, but I can share just a, a quick image. But um, Greg over here also was saying he created a slideshow for Facebook. I don't know if we can look at that or not. It's in the links. I'll definitely check it out when we're done. I'm interested to see what he's got going on. You know can me, you I'm always curious. Yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can find that if you want to share a little bit about what you've got, Liz. Sure. So when I tried to share my screen before, what happened? Uh, nothing much. I think you just need to go to a different tab. Like, so like jump over to a different tab once you share your screen. So you're not like in that perpetual like video in video in video kind of like. So that's what I was asking. So I was still in the perpetual thing. Yeah, yeah. So you just out of that. that. You need to okay. switch. Well, no, eventually you did. It just took a while. Okay. All right. Let's see if I can do it. <laughs> see that it's going to go to the profession. Okay. okay. Can you okay. see my screen? There you go. Love it. Yeah, I haven't done one of these in a while. Okay. Cool. So this is basically got it. So this is basically um, what we're doing um, for each person in our group. We just went through our different companies and we talked about um, these things, a, a SWOT analysis. So um, the strengths, these are the things your company does really well, uh, qualities that separate you from your competitors. So, um, so I'm not going to read them all because you guys can read them, but I'm going to give you some examples of some things that we put. On, on our SWOT um, analysis, some of the different companies put. So um, like the different people were talking about things like, like I'm thinking of one guy that was saying, I am really good at pivoting. So it's one thing that I do well. Before this ever happened, I was really good at that. And so um, he listed that as a strength. Um, uh, another another woman that's in the group, she said that she is very uh, flexible. 
So she's flexible in all things. So when she needs to change something, she can. And so she listed that as a strength. Um, and then we also talked about things that your company, strengths that your company has. So not just you personally. Um, and an example of that was one company is they're really good at getting their people to do whatever needs to be done instead of just, you know, a lot of times you'll, you'll tell your, your people that they have to start doing this, but getting them to actually do it is tough. And this woman's company is pretty big. And so that, that is a strength to get your whole company on board with a brand new idea and to get them all to do it really fast. That's a strength. Um, and then we also talked about weaknesses, um, things that your company just doesn't do well and you know they don't. Um, maybe your quality is just not as good as it should be. Or maybe you have a problem with attendance. Or um, maybe you know that you're, you have a lot of complexity in your booking system, right? And, and your competitors don't. They have online booking and you're like, I need to talk with them for 20 minutes before I can even book a job. It might be a weakness. So listing as many strengths, as many weaknesses as that you can, as you can. And then your strengths kind of go with your opportunities. Like when you get stuck on, well, what are the opportunities? Well, if you don't know what they are and you can't think of any, look at your strengths first. And so, okay, well, I'm really good at this. So maybe in this environment, we were talking about the COVID-19 environment, maybe in this environment I could... And I'll give an example again. Uh, the one woman that said she was really flexible. Um, an opportunity for right now being really flexible is, well, maybe I'm one of the people that can start doing some of the electric, electrostatic spraying. Or maybe I'm, you know, she came up with some uh, different opportunities based on this really flexible um, strength that she has. Another place you can look is look at your weaknesses. What are things that you're not good at? Could that be today? Could that be the time to use this opportunity to fix some of these weaknesses? Because anytime there's a big change, it's a big opportunity. Typically, though, you're going to look at your strengths for your opportunities, and then you're going to look at your weaknesses for your threats. So moving over to the threat area is these are the things that what are your competitors? What did the competitors do better than you? Or what is the environment creating that is a threat for you? So right now, obviously, huge threat, right, is the government, are they going to shut you down or are they not going to shut you down? Can you even clean? A lot of businesses are closed right now. The PPP is a threat in some ways. It's also an opportunity, right? And a lot of times you'll have your opportunities will be threats. Um, so basically... You're just looking at your business individually in these four areas, writing down everything that you can think of, and then honing in on your opportunities. And now what are some action steps that I can take? Because all of these things should be able to help you hone that opportunity list so that you have a much larger one. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing because I can't see anybody else unless – you guys need to see this for anything. No, that's, that's good. So this is like for a lot of strategic planning. This is one of the first steps that uh, strategic a lot, of, a lot of strategic planning sessions use a SWOT analysis as like one of the first parts of that. And once you kind of understand the landscape, you can start looking at your strategy and figuring out how you would need to modify and go forward and in this you know, situation with, with, with COVID-19 and the new normal, and if there's ever a time to step back and look at your strategy mm -hmm. and about how do you need to, to modify moving forward, now's the time. So um, going through that exercise would, would, would be useful for all of us. And really it's helpful too, anytime you're stuck in your business, anytime you're like, you just can't move forward or maybe you find yourself in a bad place and you don't really know why going through that exercise can really, you know, give you some clarity of, of thinking and get you feeling like, okay, I know where to go now. I know what to do. Otherwise, a lot of times, you know, that spinning thing, which has been happening to so many people in the, this COVID-19 uh, situation, everybody's like 
not everybody, but there are a lot of people that are like not doing anything because they just can't, they don't know what to do. They're kind of lost. Until yeah. The I have a friend in, in a group that I'm networking with and he's, I mean, definitely like took a couple of weeks and just like, I think didn't waste them. I think maybe there were some like mental health weeks for him though. So maybe, maybe just because you didn't get anything done, I think maybe some people are just, you know, whatever it is mental health wise, like, I, but I feel like he finally kind of stepped out of it. He hired a consultant. He's been working with somebody, you know, you, you have to put some of that like sitting on the couch aside at some point though now and start working. Like it's like, if you, if you have been in that mode, don't beat yourself up too much. Like I went to bed last night at like seven o'clock or something like that and like slept for like 10 hours. It was fantastic. Like, um, you know, I never, I never do that. And I was totally wiped out yesterday and just completely mentally exhausted. Um, so I know we're all kind of getting there, you know, from time to time, you just give yourself a little bit of grace. I, Matt, I've been sitting on the couch for the last two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Right I went here. up. I went. I was on a run at like mile four. I just like I was supposed to go like seven miles. At mile four, I was just like it was ninety degrees too. It was hot, and I was. But like mentally, oh. I could not make myself run anymore. I was like, I'm gonna just have to walk home. I was a long way from home. <laughs> <laughs> so I went like six. I ended up going six miles because I ended up walking two miles home. So it just took me a long time to get home, basically. Oh. Wow. So, yeah, it was it was kind of a rough it was kind of a rough one. But I just I just ran out of steam for the day, and I was just like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna beat myself up that I didn't get this done today. I'm like I'm gonna give myself some grace because I'm doing a I'm doing a ton of stuff and filling my head with a ton of new information all at once and trying to juggle all this this stuff. So yeah, I mean, you know, give yourself some grace, but don't let yourself be sidelined for too long. You have to get some things done every day. And, um, you know, you don't snap. want to slide into depression either. Yeah, right? no, definitely snap out of it. If you, if you can get yourself to do it otherwise, yeah. Hi, my friend hired a coach and I, you know, um, you know, that's, that's something that maybe he did. I have a coach for athletics and stuff like that. That helps me. I, I have a consultant for business that I work with from time to time. And I have great partnerships with people like Liz and Tom that I'm, I'm networking with constantly. So I feel like those, like my daily calls with Tom are, like are a little bit of mental relief sometimes because I'm like, okay, these are some smart people and they don't know what they don't know all the answers yet either. So we at least together, I feel like know a lot more at the end of each one of those calls. But um, yeah, I mean, definitely leverage your networks and um, you know your contacts and and work with people um, and and you know don't just sit at home and watch you know uh, Love Is Blind or whatever that new show is or. Uh, I, I did binge watch um, Tiger King, but I do that on the bike. Like, look, I have this bike over here and it's got a TV in front of it. So at least I'm getting it. I'm getting exercise while I do it. So like I will binge watch TV while I'm on the bike. I'm going to do a three hour bike ride on Saturday because I can't go outside. They're shutting down like like the county. Like you can't ride. Like they're, they're really getting wow. strict here. Yeah. So I think I'll be doing a three hour bike ride inside this Saturday. But yeah, I'll, I'll find something to binge watch. Then um, you know, it doesn't all have to be all education all the time. You gotta you gotta take some mental breaks. But yeah, I think uh, I think it's time to start really working those plans. Though, if you have been kind of if you have been kind of grieving your business and and you know chilling for a couple of weeks, it's time to jump back in. And just for the record, I've been getting work done while I'm on the couch. I'm not watching Netflix. <laughs> and, and you did have a lot of information about Tiger King, though, Tom. <laughs> just right. saying. I thoroughly, enjoy, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and like, I just, it's just like a slice of like where I live. Like, I see that those people are like right up my alley in Missouri. As someone that has camped their whole life in Missouri and like owns an RV, and like, I, I know these people. Like on that show, like I have met that guy. Like, I mean, not him personally, but there is there is a Tiger King equivalent in Missouri. The and, same profile. Oh yeah. <laughs> We have so many private zoos in Missouri. It's unbelievable. Missouri is like everything you expect it to be and like sometimes worse. Like it is, it is fantastic. <laughs> it's like outside of the cities, it is, it is like <laughs> pure Americana. Like you cannot experience how crazy Missouri is. Like Ozark does a pretty good job of describing some of the like oh, crazy. Yeah, there's some craziness in our state for sure. Yeah. So, now don't get me started on Ozark. That's a good show. Yeah, I haven't started. There's another. I guess I heard there's another season to start picking up on. But 
Yeah, I mean, definitely decompress, but you know, get get stuff done. Now is a great time. Like we talked about these videos, and and again, you know, my 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 philosophy has always been perfect is the enemy of good, and and honestly, good enough is really good. You know, um, you know, if you make some mistakes in the video and there's something you don't like about it, just get it out there, and then if you have time, go back and shoot it again. Um, I feel like a lot of us get stuck on making stuff perfect and nothing ever gets done when you, when you hold yourself to that standard. So, um, yeah, if you, you know, if you can just do something every day that's productive and that is something you can look at and say, okay, this is something that'll serve me, um, when we move past this point, wherever you're at, whether you're open now or whether you're, you're closed like I am, or, you know, wherever you are in your business, um, but yeah, man, I'm seeing, you know, some positive news coming out every day. And then some, obviously there's going to be some scary statistics that come out over the next couple of weeks that are going to be, um, you know, disturbing on some levels. So we're going to all have to kind of temper some of that, you know, enthusiasm to reopen with. There's going to potentially be some things, at least in my area, that might actually keep me closed longer. But I'm still setting dates. I'm still preparing as if we're going to open on a certain date and mentally getting there but it may not be able to happen um, just based on what my region, what my region does. Well, I wanted to, Greg shared a link in, 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 in chat to a video he had. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's take a look at this. I love that he's talking about Valentine's Day. So he just did a slideshow and then turned it into a video with this with this program that he used. So he just used a series of pictures and did some transitions here. There's some music on. Looks good. I actually like your uniforms, Greg. I like the scrubs. I think that's I think that's very apropos. <laughs> what is the word? Uh, like. Uh, Apropos. Apropos, whatever. Like it's very, it's very relevant to the times we're in, Greg. I think that's uh, that's fantastic. I think that uh, I've been looking at scrubs as uniforms too, and seeing if that's I could, true. yeah, seeing if I could get them. Because um, again, I think it kind of goes into the point of of cleaning for health, like right, like you're. I mean, you know, like you're a provider that's uh, that's interested in in making sure that the home is a clean and healthy place. And I think it's easier, you know, to p potentially um, have a, you know, supply on hand and even launder them for your staff. If they're like, if you had like a, you know, if you have commercial laundry on site, like my, like my business does, Tom, I know your business does, you could, you know, make sure that they bring in what they, what you gave them back and then give them a supply for the week when, when you resupply them. So um, I've been looking at scrubs. That's very cool, man. Us too. And we found uh, flag scrubs. So, Oh, yeah, it's we're pretty much, on. We're pretty much transitioning over. Yeah. Cool. It's on. I got to find uh, like some, I'm sure I can find some uh, like that fuchsia pink that mine are. I'm sure I can. Oh, yeah. Are Actually, you going to put, no. are you going to logo them or are you just going to go with, uh, are you just going to go with, uh, we're um, going to go name tags. Name tags. Yeah. We use name, we use name badges like on a, on a lanyard, but, um, I almost think the lanyard's almost a bad idea. Like almost, uh, you know, that's fabric that's been in home to home. It'd almost be better just to do a clip on badge, uh, like clip it on the pocket or something like that of, of the, of the uh, uniform. So really yeah, easier to Yeah, very cool. I love it, Greg. Yeah, so they, they hold up I even, do too. they hold up even through bleach, he says. So that's, that's great. I don't, yeah. I don't know how that'll, that'll work with our, what we do, but uh, I mean, hydrogen peroxide does stain stuff too. So if, it, if they hold up through that, that's great. You just got to get the right blend, Matt. They, that's what we had to look at. Yeah. Getting the right blend, get enough poly in there. Get but enough. they'll be fine. Yeah, enough, get enough poly. poly. And then are you going to do it? So I got this kind of off topic, but are you going to do it so that you're going to have them like switch out? Like you're going to give them enough for each day and they can just bring them back. You'll wash them and, and they'll turn them in. You're going to give them, they're going to home launder. Or how are you going to do it? Uh, we have always had it so that we'll launder for them. Okay. So we'll just keep doing it the same way. They can just drop their uniforms in the laundry and they'll get laundered. Okay. So they always have enough. I like that. I think that's what we're going to kind of switch to. And, and I, I like the idea of scrubs because it does present the idea of, um, of right? safety, safety and hygiene. So, 
Yeah, man. Um, Are you going to do the bottoms too or just the tops? Bo tops and bottoms. Okay, so I'll yeah. both. Tops and bottoms. Yeah. And honestly, it's just simple. I mean, it's, it's you know, it, it kind of goes with everything that we're working towards with cleaning for health and the, the ideas that we're doing, you know, and, and I, I, that's another thing that I've been doing, Tom, is taking some of the ideas that you, that I used to kind of jive and kind of give you little jabs on. Nobody cares about this. And I'm rebranding my, my website. A lot of the green, the word green, we're the green cleaning experts. Well, we're going to be the, the, the cleaning for health and safety experts and mm -hmm. really become super knowledgeable on, on HCT. And I can't wait to, to take HCT now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so Heather wants to know, um, Greg, can you um, um, put a link to where you get your scrubs? She would really love that. And Paula wants to know if anyone's considering giving virtual home estimates. I think some people are already doing that, Paula. Uh, I would imagine we'll be seeing more of that. Probably, um, yeah, probably uh, fewer and fewer in-home estimates, especially, yeah. you know, for the short run. I mean, I've done, I've done, you know, I don't know how many millions of dollars since we've been in business, but I've maybe done since we started, I think we did three home estimates when we started and we're like, this sucks. I still have one of those clients. And I remember, I remember when we like, you know, we're, we're shutting down for this and I, and I, you know, she emailed me and I was like, you know, Laura, like you're actually one of our first clients. I don't know if you know this, but like, you know, like literally one of the first clients and she's like, Oh, you guys were so professional. I thought you guys have been doing this for years. I was like, you were like probably our second or third customer we'd ever, ever met. And you've been such a great customer. She's back on like 2004 prices. So she's not switching anytime. Like, you know, she's not switching anytime soon or whatever. When did we start? 2008, um, 2008 pricing. But um, it's funny, man. Like we've gone all this time and never done in-home estimates. I, and I will tell you, it's, it's going to be a game changer just to get off doing them because it's, it's not a good use of your time to begin with. And then obviously there's other, there's other concerns now. So I think you'll find you'll have so much more time. Uh, Rosemary was given a tip on scrubs. She had some from scrubs, which is, yeah, that makes sense from that, from that dealer. It might make sense yeah. to buy them from a wholesaler instead, if you can find them um, because you can, you'll buy them in bulk versus scrubs would be more like a retailer buying them, you know, one on one, I would think for for employees, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they have some yeah. some good programs. Let me go ahead and bounce through a couple of other things here. I just want to make sure I share before we run out of time. And if we yeah. want to swing back around and get get uh, some more questions, we can. One of the things that we've been talking about every Thursday uh, is the weekly unemployment claims, because Thursday is the day that they kind of add up and share the numbers from the prior week, and you know. The week before last, there was, uh, I don't know, like three and a half million claims. And last week, it was like 6.6. .6. Again, this week, it was 6.6 .6 or roughly. So over the last three weeks, we're, we're approaching 17 million uh, unemployment claims in the country. Wow. I mean, and this graph kind of goes back till, I don't know, 03 or so. The recession is here, if you can see that. The unemployment claims went up, but like I said, the, the highest weekly unemployment claim in history was like 675,000, and I think that was somewhere in here. And this is the graph for what it's been over the last three weeks. So, so, so what do you think the workforce is? About 120 million people? So is that- That would be my guess. Population in total is like 330 million and you've got kids, you've got retired people, you've got, so maybe half of that, 1.6 is, is, is my guess. So just those numbers alone would put in like 14% and then you add in what we were at before, like three, so 17, 18% unemployment. That's pretty high. That's scary. Yeah. You're, 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 we're over 10% unemployment for sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm one of them. I filed. <laughs> yeah. um, another thing um, we were talking about was the article that uh, Joe was referencing yesterday in Forbes. And you're going to be able to get that in a link mm -hmm. off of cleaning business today. We, we posted an article here today, and we sent it out in a, in a newsletter as well of what uh, Joe's doing with uh, his grassroots campaign in Maine. And he shared with us a couple of downloads. I guess I'm downloading it, but um, these are Word docs. 
that you can modify your 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 yourself. This has the link to the Forbes article in it. And he gives us like talking points, even like we were talking to the press. You know, these are the, the points that we want to hit. And all we really need to do is uh, drop our name in this and make a couple of tweaks. And we can be sending press releases out to media. Which one is this? This is the press release. And the other document is one that you would send to your uh, senators and your representatives to uh, point out the economic irrational aspects of what we're doing with uh, the $600 a week unemployment uh, layered over top of just the eight week period of, of um, economic stimulus that we're supposed to use to bring all our people back to work, even in a period of time when we might not even have any work to do because of stay at home orders and, and things like that. So um, one quick thought on that, um, on that, uh, the press release, is don't over don't overthink it. Like you can get like most media contacts. Like if you go to like so like St. Louis Post Dispatch and you go to contact us, it'll have all of the it'll have all of the reporters that are on different beats and things like that. And you'll be able to click that reporter and it'll actually if you have like a email server like so my my default server is Gmail so it'll open up a Gmail tab and I'll start typing you know to that reporter. I would just copy and paste that letter in there change out your you know to who it's for your name and there's and tom pointed out that it's not the payroll protection app act it's the paycheck protection act um so maybe a couple tweaks to the letter uh but just just email to make it as simple as possible for those for those people so don't send it as an attachment is my recommendation put it in the body of an email and 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 just get it out there as quickly as possible i sent it to um about 10 different reporters today and i, I really Kind of lazed out because I could have I could have searched a little harder and I got I heard back from one of them that's interested in the story so you know maybe I'll hear back from some more it's kind of the end of the it's kind of is you know it's kind of the end of the news the, the news cycle for today by the time I sent those out so maybe maybe I'll hear something tomorrow. Another thing that came up yesterday that uh, we had a request for was the link to the article Matt that you were sharing about which jobs are safer than others in the uh, Corona-19 world, Coronavirus-19 world. And um, this is the link. And it is, again, it's over here on the CBT uh, resource page. You want to share with us a little bit, Matt, about how we use this? Yeah, I mean, if I'm on the page, typically there's there's a vertical and a horizontal access with different, with different risk factors. The horizontal access, so like from left to right, was basically how many times you're, you know, as a percentage of a job, how many times you're exposed to the public in a given day compared to other jobs. It's not a, it's not a hard number, like number of actual exposures, like a hundred. It's, it's just like how much, how likely you are to be exposed to the public. It's not, it's not as detailed as I thought. I thought it was actually like, you know, like okay, this is this, um, and then the. The size of the bubble is how big the population of people that hold that job are. So that is, so that's kind of relevant. Like, so, you know, just looking at a bubble, um, but a bubble that's, but, but, a, but, but a bubble that's both very vertical and very far right is probably in the most high risk category. Where we fall is, is over towards the middle, towards the middle, towards the back quartile. So not a whole lot of exposure to the public but towards the middle of possible exposure towards towards the towards disease in general. So not necessarily this disease, but um, I've, I've heard it said that uh, we do work in some pathogen rich environments in people's homes. Uh, that's been some words that I've heard before. Um, and, and I would say I would have to agree with that. Um, however, we can reduce the risk of COVID-19 exposure by creating some standards that we have for our customers and holding them to that. And then basically having a, so we were we were sending out a link with a certification every day of that they were having to certify that they had no known exposures, hadn't traveled, hadn't done anything. And I don't know if that link um, is, do you have a link to like, or did you do a screenshot of the questionnaire that we were doing for our employees? Because it's very sim it's very similar to the questionnaire or to the certification I was asking of my customers uh, while we were still operating. So I think that really that really reduces your exposure to risk, especially if they've had no known exposure. Um, to Matt, come. if you want to if you want to share that in the chat, that would probably be the easiest way. If you yeah. want to yeah. share that, let me see if I can. You can see on this screen here. This is where maids 
fall. It looks like uh, janitors actually have more physical proximity, but uh, less exposure, I guess. So there's more, a little more exposure in a home, but you're probably being exposed to more people if you're in, in, in commercial space. Look way down here. If you really are a germaphobe and want a job that has the least amount of exposure, you want to be a logger. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and this was just for jobs that make less than a hundred thousand dollars. Just to be clear, so there are so it doesn't even include doctors or some other things. So you just got a lawyer on here. Well, that's lawyer. Lawyers don't make more than a hundred thousand dollars on average, Tom. Well, they got a they got an annual income of one hundred and twenty. Do they? Okay. Well, I thought I thought I thought the average annual income for a lawyer was more like eighty, but that's you know that's neither here nor there. Well, I don't know. That's what they're saying here. But I get, uh, I get the point. Yeah. Um, maybe there was a, maybe there was another limit. Maybe it was two hundred thousand or one hundred and fifty or something. I don't know. Yeah, it was based on what it was also showing was is that a lot of a lot of the exposure that is out there the the most high risk jobs tend to be lower paying jobs. So that's something to that's something to consider too is that you know, um, you know, grocery clerks and things like that, that are being considered essential. I think part of the, what they were having in the article was, uh, was jobs that were, you know, very high risk with very little financial reason for them to be um, considered uh, essential at this point. So. Well, we're, uh, we're right up uh, against the hour. Um, <laughs> our, our warped hour. <laughs> oh yeah. I so, put a, I put so, a, um, real quick, we're going to do our COVID-19 cleaning design for house cleaning, uh, professionals, house cleaning technicians. And again, this class isn't disaster recovery or, you know, forensic cleaning. This is the stuff that you need to know if your job is doing maintenance cleaning for consumers, bi-weekly cleanings of Mrs. Jones's house. This is what we're going to be talking about here. And we're going to go over a lot of the stuff that we may already know, but it's really important to hear it again in terms of, you know, the proper way to wash your hands, what all the PPE is, the, the ways that you should be using it, common mistakes that people use with PPP that can put them at risk or other people at risk. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll share more in the next couple of days in terms of what the agenda is going to be. We're going to do it Wednesday. We're going to do it Thursday. We're going to do two sessions. Each one, uh, we're going to be shooting to make it a 90-minute 90, uh, 90 session. We're going to be doing them at 4 o'clock Eastern. Uh, we're still fiddling around with what channels that we're going to be doing it on. One of the things that, that, that we are going to do is we're going to stream it here on this, this Facebook channel. We think that we might be able to have an alternative, uh, 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 an alternative source, an additional source that we can stream it, uh, maybe to another Facebook page. At the very least, we'll be recording it and posting those videos on Facebook that uh, we could go back and and get and share with our staff at any point in time. But uh, you know, for your cleaning technicians, if you can kind of be coaching them up and as many of them as you can have available at four o'clock on Wednesday and Thursday of next week. Um, we're going to have a, a, an online quiz afterwards that people can take a test. And if uh, they, they, they pass that, they'll be getting a certificate of completion. If they, uh, you know, take the test, and they enter the name of the company that they, they work for. That would be on their certificate of completion as well. Um, what am I, what am I missing, Les? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think you're missing anything. The, uh, uh, the only other piece is, for the people that were concerned about um, not wanting it to be here because they don't want their employees to come here, that's why it will also go on Facebook so that you don't have to bring your employees to this live version. But mm -hmm. then they won't have a live version. They will have a recording that they'll be watching, which is a different mm -hmm. experience. They won't yeah. be able to ask questions. Yeah, this one will be live, the, the, the streaming. and. I'm going to test. I think that we have the ability to stream to two different Facebook channels at the same time. And if that's the case, we might pick another one that uh, is more generic. I'm not sure what that would be at this point, but but we've got options. All right. I'm looking. Okay, guys. Well, thanks so much, Matt. Thanks so much for your help. All right. um, thanks, Matt. Good stuff. 
we'll uh, we'll see you here tomorrow, and uh, we'll make give it our very best effort to start on five o'clock sharp. We can do that, Liz. We can do it. See you tomorrow. Thanks, guys. All right, bye, y'all.